Good morning. This is Perspectives. I'm Celeste Baranyi. Today, my guest is Julia Batchelder. She is the events manager for the Maine Cancer Foundation. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Celeste. Thank you so much for having me. You are always so busy and you have event after event. Tell us about the latest event coming up to benefit the Maine Cancer Foundation. We are busy at Maine Cancer Foundation and we're definitely rolling into the peak of event season. Um, Coming up in June, we are so excited to be hosting our eighth annual Twilight 5K event. It's a walk and run in South Portland. And it's going to be hosted by one of our other Town Square Media partners, WJBQ. And so Kylie from the Q is a runner and she'll be the MC there, right? Exactly. We've had Lori there in the past. um, And this year, we're so excited to have Kylie. And we've been so grateful for the support. And it does take a whole community to keep an organization like Maine Cancer Foundation running. So we can each pitch in in our own ways through donations, volunteering. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But Julia, first, walk us through what exactly the Maine Cancer Foundation does. Absolutely. So our mission is to reduce cancer in Maine. As many people might know, Maine has a higher than average cancer rate, and it's actually the number one killer here in the state. Um, So we focus primarily on sort of three areas, prevention, early detection, and access to care for all Mainers. So all the funds that we raise stay right here in Maine, and they all go towards helping our communities prevent cancer or get the best care when that cancer diagnosis does arise. And how does Maine Cancer Foundation help to reduce cancer and raise awareness in Maine? So Maine Cancer Foundation funds grants that are based towards three different sort of categories. There's prevention, screening, and access to care. So for example, with prevention, we will fund programs that are geared towards messaging um, that goes out to youth to prevent them from starting smoking, since smoking is one of the top killers in Maine. Screenings is another way that we help out with funding grants that provide access to screening for people who are at risk. There's also access to care, and that's when, you know, with, with Maine being such a rural state, people often don't have a way to get to treatment if they have been diagnosed with cancer. So if somebody's faced with a diagnosis, then they can speak to their provider and get a referral to one of the programs that we have funded that'll give them a way to get a ride so they can get the best treatment out there. Those are all so important. And you can go to the Dempsey Foundation website to get more resources are listed there. But your doctor can also give you information. The Cancer Foundation is raising money for the grants that are so important to all of these other organizations. And the cancer mortality in Maine, an estimated 3,100 people in Maine will die from cancer in a year. Nearly a third of those cancer deaths could have been prevented by early detection and improvements in the personal health, whether that is smoking cessation or a change in diet. All of that's really important. The Maine Cancer Foundation is located in Falmouth. You can reach them at info at maincancer.org or call them at 207-773-2533. If you want to get information, I also want to talk to you about donations. You guys have a challenge. It's the Challenge Cancer, Cut Cancer in Maine 20% by 2020. And that's going to happen by having better awareness out there about health care and early detection and through research. So your grants are providing for all of these different things. Tell me about the challenge. Yeah, so we rolled this out a couple of years ago, Challenge Cancer 2020. Um, And just as you said, our goal is to reduce cancer by 20% by the year 2020 through some of those areas of prevention, early detection, and access to care. In the past, we have we have focused a lot of our funding on research, but we found that the best way that we can sort of affect cancer here in Maine and the effect that it's had on people's lives is through reducing the incidence of cancer to begin with. So that's where kind of prevention comes in because so many cancers can be prevented. And then if cancers are caught early, a lot of times they're very treatable. So that's why we really do want to get people those screenings early ahead of time so that they can get treatment and come out of this on top. So with prevention, early detection, then again, when people do have that cancer diagnosis, getting them treatment so that they can overcome this awful disease, we really want to get that goal of 20% down by 2020. I was just looking at a crazy statistic saying that more than 8,200 Maine residents will receive a cancer diagnosis this year, and that is more than the population of Freeport. Yeah, unfortunately, the rates really are staggering. And I'm sure all the listeners out there, if they haven't been directly impacted by cancer, either a family, a friend, a loved one has been. What has been really helpful for some of our fundraisers in our events, the Try for a Cure and the Twilight 5K, um, these events both have fundraising minimums, but people have found that it's really not difficult to get people behind them, behind the cause, 
and give a donation because everyone really has been affected by this disease. Yeah, uh, cancer used to be just related to smokers. And lung cancer is still the number one cause of death among the cancers. But it's not just a smoker's disease anymore. Even lung cancer, people who've never smoked a day in their lives are getting lung cancer. Uh, Colorectal cancer is up. Pancreatic cancer, breast cancer, and non-lung tobacco-related cancers as well. So this is literally affecting everyone from small children right up through the ages. With the mortality rate like that, we really, really need to work hard at it. Um, You can also help by donating to the Maine Cancer Foundation. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So our events that are coming up this summer, the Twilight 5K and the Try for a Cure, are really where we get the bulk of our funds raised. We have these awesome participants that come back year after year and just amaze us continually with how much they're able to raise from their communities, their networks. So it's easy to get involved and donate. I'm sure most people probably know somebody who's participating in the Twilight 5K or the Try for a Cure. And if not, you should be. You can register now for the Twilight 5K and get involved that way. Um, or you can make a donation if you're not able to participate. And you can come right to our website at maincancer.org and find out more about how to make a donation. Right. And when you go to the website, there are a few different ways you can help. If you're not getting involved in one of the events, you can make a one-time gift. You can become a $10 a month challenge member. Or you could learn more about their 2020 goals and get involved in a different way. Really, it is such an amazing foundation and it's doing such great work. And once again, we're creating the fire to keep all of these programs going. So it's important that you show up. So give us an overview of the Twilight 5K. Sure. So Twilight 5K, this is the eighth year that we've done it. It's going to be this year on Thursday, June 8th at 7 p.m., on the campus over at SMCC. It's a gorgeous course. And what's really great about this event is it's really a family oriented event. So kids can participate, men, women, you know, the try is our event that's women only. This is open to everyone, all skill levels. You can run the event, you can walk the event. If you walk, you can do the 5k course, or we also have a shorter 1.2 mile course that you can take part in. So registration is open. It's $25 for walkers and $35 for runners. We do have a fundraising minimum. Everybody who participates is required to raise $100 for Maine Cancer Foundation. But that really has been proven by our athletes to be really manageable. As I mentioned, everyone has been affected by cancer. And so chances are, if you put a link on Facebook, send it out to your coworkers, you'll be amazed to see the support that you'll get. The event is also free to kids 16 and under. So for families who are kind of daunted by the concept of fundraising for multiple people, know that they can bring their kids, have a good time. The post-race event is going to be awesome. We have beer, we have pizza, we have a band, Tickle is going to be playing It's going to be a really fun event. It's a gorgeous course. I did the event years ago before I worked at Maine Cancer Foundation. It's a nice flat course, which is nice. Yeah. Um, The views are gorgeous. And whether you're walking or running, you're going to have a really good time. What about volunteering for the Maine Cancer Foundation? Are you looking for volunteers? We are absolutely looking for volunteers. Uh, You can head over to twilight5k.com and either sign up for the event or sign up to volunteer. Um, This event takes about 100 volunteers, so we're definitely um, open to having anybody of any skill level. There's different roles, whether you're out on the course, you know, flagging people in the right direction or helping with setup. There's kind of a role for anyone who wants to be involved. And how would they contact you? Sure. Um, They can call us at 207-773-2533 if you have any questions about the event. I'd be more than happy to chat with you. There's a lot of information on the website, tryforacure.com. Um, And you can also email us, info at maincancer.org. And you guys are 100% funding Maine organizations. Exactly. Yep. All the money that is raised by these events stays right here in Maine to affect change in cancer rates here. Julia, you touched on rural living in Maine and how transportation comes into play for so many people who are battling cancer. Tell us how you guys are helping at the Maine Cancer Foundation. Maine is a huge state geographically, and so for us living in Portland, it's sometimes easy to forget that not everyone has access to resources like we do um, in terms of medical care, getting to appointments. So one challenge that we found that a lot of cancer patients face is actually getting to their appointments. So, you know, after being faced with a cancer diagnosis, as if that isn't bad enough, then they're 
you know, trying to figure out how they're going to get two, three hours to their chemo appointment. And, you know, if they can't drive themselves, then they need to have a friend or family member take time off of work to get them to an appointment. And sometimes that just isn't feasible. So we don't want anyone to ever have to choose between getting their treatment or paying their bills. So we've put a lot of funding into transportation grants, which are really geared towards getting people a ride to their appointments so that they're hitting all their treatments and connecting them really with the best care possible. So even if they live in Washington County, they still can have access to the best resources that we have at some of the bigger hospitals. Yeah, I think a lot of us who as you said, or living close to the hospitals, don't take into consideration the financial effect that a cancer diagnosis has on a family, aside from just the medical bills. As you said, you know, just the day to day of, you know, when somebody is going through chemo, getting them to their appointments and things like that. So thank you for doing that work. You guys are also out in the community. I think this is great because Mainers are living a lifestyle outside. We're outdoors all the time, but we don't take care of ourselves. We don't put on nearly <laughs> enough sunscreen. We're at the beach. We're working on the farm. We're out gardening and we don't put on sunscreen. You guys are looking to change that. How are you doing that? Absolutely. I think a lot of us forget that although it's cold out right now, the sun is still shining a lot of times and skin cancer is on the rise and it's so easy to prevent. And if caught early, it's easy to treat as well. So we're really excited about this new initiative that we've taken on of actually physically getting sunscreen out to our communities. So this winter, we put out sunscreen dispensers at the ski mountains. So, you know, people forget that in the winter, the sun is still out there. And (laughs) especially with the glare of the snow, it's really important that you stay covered up. So come home with a goggle tan. (laughs) Exactly. So we want to remind people to be putting on sunscreen year round. This month, we're finishing up installing sunscreen dispensers at the ferry terminal here in Portland. So if you're hopping on Casco Bay lines to go for a little excursion, make sure you get that sunscreen on um, a day on the water can end up with a nasty sunburn if you aren't careful. Also, we're putting them at the Sea Dog. So we're really excited. Slugger's excited. We're excited. Everyone's going to be putting on sunblock um, watching the ball game. So watch out for those if you're heading to the game or heading out to the islands this summer. I know a lot of parents who are fastidious about making sure that their kids are slathered in sunscreen, but they don't wear it themselves. And parents, you need to keep protecting your skin. I grew up in a different generation where we didn't think that much about it. But now that we understand how skin cancer works and the growing number of diagnoses we have every year, a little bit scary. So please, grown-ups, make sure that you lather up with your sunscreen. Yeah, set a good example for the kids. That's right. Okay, so once more, let's go over the Twilight 5K and tell us one more time how to register. Absolutely. So registration is live at twilight5k.com. If you have any questions, though, you can always give us a call at 207 773-2533. We are looking for participants. We're also looking for volunteers. They can also register at twilight5k.com. There's a special link that they can click on to get to that. One thing that's really cool about the Twilight 5K that I would really encourage if somebody's thinking about, oh, I want to do this, but I don't want to be alone, is get a team together. Last year, we had 66 teams participating, and it's a really fun way to come together, whether it's your workplace or your neighborhood or, you know, you have your extended family and you want everyone to come out for this cause. We do have kind of a team division, so there will be an award for the top fundraising team. So get a big group together and come out and have a great night. It's as I say, the weather, I promise it's going to be good. <laughs> um, we've earned it after the rain we've had recently. Absolutely. Um, so come out for a fun night, beer, pizza, music. What time does it start? It starts at 7 p.m. So that's nice for those who don't want to get up for an early Saturday morning race. This is a really nice way to kind of wind down the workday. Um, come out and join us. It's all for a great cause. All right. Once again, that's Thursday, June 8th at Southern Maine Community College, SMCC, one of the most beautiful scenic parts of the coast of southern Maine and really just a beautiful tradition. So go take part in it, the Twilight 5K with the Maine Cancer Foundation. Thank you so much for coming in, Julia. Thank you. I've been speaking with Julia Batchelder. She's the events manager for the Maine Cancer Foundation. I'm Celeste Baranyi, and this has been Perspectives.